This is going low. Hey, and we're live. Hi, everyone. Good evening, good morning, good middle of the nighting. Um, while everyone gets set up, uh, today we're going to talk about the new design challenge, okay? And then we'll do a bit of a live chat at the end like we normally do. Uh, Taylor, can you give me a thumbs up in the document that we share? Just make sure audio and video is working fine. All good, I'm live. All right, so yeah, uh, throughout this um, live stream, ask questions. It could be about what we're talking about today, uh, the design challenge, uh, or just anything. We do a bit of a Q&A at the end, we'll answer your questions. So just dump them into the chat right now, and uh, Taylor and Steve will grab them and we'll answer them at the end. All right, let's get started. Uh, let's talk about the new design challenge. Okay, it's the new season. Okay, there'll be a little bit of a series going on again. And this particular design challenge is rebranding. Okay, and it's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna be rebranding your very own favorite local takeaway or takeout or carry out, whatever you call it. Okay, so mine is a local Chinese uh, takeout. It is a place called Hofu. Okay, so think of your favorite local takeaway. It's gotta be cheap and cheerful. Okay, and what we're gonna be doing is they've come to you. So the brief is they've come to you, okay, and they want you to rebrand them. They're moving from cheap and cheerful Okay, through to like expensive gourmet, still takeaway, but very kind of expensive. Think like for me, like three times the price, whatever it is for your normal takeaway, it's gonna be triple that price. So that's the challenge you have as a designer, taking that very same takeaway, they're gonna shut up shop, okay, they're gonna close down and they're gonna reopen with your new branding. Okay, they're gonna be in charge of the change of, you know, the food quality is gonna change, the you know, the weight stuff are gonna change, the decor is gonna change, everything's gonna match this new highbrow level. You need to get the branding to come along. Okay, so uh, what else? So um, they're not gonna, in terms of the client that they're targeting, they're not trying to get the old people that used to pay, like for me, I used to pay, like I pay say 20 euros for a takeout for my family, okay? I, they, they're gonna be charging 60 now. Okay, so it's, they're not gonna try and bring their new clients and try and charge them triple. What they're looking to do is become a, kind of a, a destination place. Okay, so let's turn that off. Um, they wanna become a, yeah, a destination place. So they want food bloggers to talk about them. They don't want just the people who live in the surrounding area to come to them. They want to appear on TripAdvisor. Okay, they want people to come. You, when you go to this town, your town, okay, you've got to go to that particular place. Okay, so you're not you know, trying to convert the old clients, you've got new clients. And those new clients are gonna have uh, different values, they're gonna have different incomes and different expectations. That's your challenge. Um, uh, in terms of this challenge, it's gonna be exclusive for Bring Your Own Laptop members. Okay, I know a lot of you are members already. If you're not a member, this might be a good chance to come over and you know, uh, uh, join Bring Your Laptop. So as part of that membership there, you will be getting, um, you know, will be, when you submit your challenge, okay, I will be plus the other teaching aides and other designers will kind of give you feedback, as well as there'll be a live event in a live stream called the After Party in two weeks, okay, where I will go through all the, you know, the really interesting submissions, okay, and we will discuss them in a live chat in, it's about uh, 12 days away from now, okay, it's the 11th of February. Okay, will we do that live, reviewing everybody's kind of entries. Uh, as part of that subscription as well, if you are keen to come over, you get all of my courses. Um, some of the new stuff over there is the new podcasts. Okay, they're exclusive for Bring Your Own Laptop as well. Uh, they are launching either in a week or in three weeks. We've got some technical difficulties, so one of those two things are going to happen. Um, what else? So the must-haves for this challenge. Oh, also no, if you're not a member of Bring Your Own Laptop, Okay, and it's not right for you right now, you can still use this as a great opportunity to build something for your portfolio. You know, kind of a rebranding project is something super useful, okay, to build out your portfolio and you can use it for that. So you can still play along because I'm gonna, I'm gonna deliver it all now. So the must-haves, you need to keep the same name, okay, and you have to have the same cuisine, okay? So uh, you can't change any of that. The level's gonna go up, okay? So the same name, same cuisine. Uh, you have to retain one thing from the old brand, okay, or the old logo. It depends on your shop. Most of them are just gonna have a logo slapped on the front, okay, but you need to retain one thing. It might be the color, it might be 
uh, the font. It might be a shape from the logo. It might be the logo. The logo just needs to be positioned differently. Okay, so this is not a how to design a logo, design a logo so much as trying to convince people that this place is worth that extra money. Uh, in terms of your deliverables, okay, uh, everyone's, the things you have to do is you have to um, submit a logo, okay, your redesigned logo, and I want you to show you're working. So depending on how much time you have to put into this, some people are going to have a teeny tiny bit, and some people are going to have a put a bit more effort into it because they want to use this for their portfolio. Both categories are fine, okay, but I want to show you working. If you've done just a couple of sketches, include those, okay, uh, uh, before and after, okay, or the before of your um, local restaurant. And also, if you are going to take this a little bit further and you haven't done much logo design, you're like, man, that'd be a good time to do it, is to check out one of my late, well, one of my late, the latest video that I've released on YouTube here. It's called the Bring Your Laptop Show, and it's about logo design. And it will take you through those steps if you've never done them before. And it will include, like, it, it means that when you do submit your challenge, you can show your, uh, what is it, you can show your kind of like, your target audience, you can talk about your competitor analysis, any mind maps you might have done, some drawings, and then some development in Illustrator. Okay, so any failed options as well, okay, because this isn't winning the challenge, it's about sharing your process, good and bad, and I know you like it when I share the stuff that ain't, uh, isn't so great, it's the same with other people, uh, you know, too much Instagram life going on where beautiful things are appearing and none of the hard work and sweat and the terrible ideas getting shown. Let's do that. Um, optional, so the, the must-haves are you need a logo, show you're working. The optional stuff is, I would, you know, if you wanna take this further and do a proper rebrand, is to do one or all of the following. Uh, menu, signage, go take a photo of the front of it, okay, and redesign it. Uh, do a delivery van or bike, okay, um, mock that up. Uh, takeaway containers might be a great one to do. And if you have done or want to do, um, you've done maybe the Premiere Pro or After Effects course, let's do a social uh, social ad for them. Okay, so a, a video, okay, promoting their new brand. Okay, it can be short. It's gonna be a, like a paid ad for Facebook. So um, do a short little ad, put it on YouTube and upload it in your challenge. Okay, so you, those are all optional. And there will be, uh, you know, the, on the challenge website, there will be a way of downloading the uh, exercise files, which will show you everything that's in the brief. Okay, so everything that I'm going through today. Or you can rewatch this video over and over again. Pause it and slow me down. I talk too fast, especially when I'm live. Uh, let's look at, oh, before we go on, I'll show you my one, right? This is my local takeaway. Uh, where are we? So this is my place, it's called Hofu. Uh, actually, I think somebody designed a pretty good logo for it, but it's been, uh, it's a nice way of saying it. It's been kind of like, the, the owners just kind of like picked bits out of it and half implied it. So there is some, you know, somebody did a good design on this. I found the designer who made it because I was looking into it. But um, uh, it's, that's the outside of it. That's the menu. Can you see that? I can, it's in the way. Okay, so that, yeah, that's the menu, that's the signage outside, that's it there. So this is the one that I'd be redoing. So find your local one and yeah, it's a fun, fun project. Let's go back to you. All right, who is this for? It's not for people who are good at designing logos already, okay? It's for both of us, okay? For people that have experience, it's a great way to build a portfolio project, okay? And people that there's always something to learn in branding, okay? So, and somebody who's never designed it, and you've done nothing like this before, and you're new to this creative field, this is perfect for you. So no like previous design experience is required. If you are feeling a little bit intimidated by it, and you're like, you know, designing a logo and sharing it with other people for the first time, okay, go check out my video. There'll be a link in the description for that of how to design your logo. It's not super hard and like, yeah. Anyway, uh, ideal software to use, Designing a logo tends to get done in Illustrator. If you don't have a subscription to Illustrator, use whatever you've got. There's lots of free stuff online. Canva might be a great one, um, but it'd be a good time to practice your Illustrator skills. If you've never used Illustrator before, that membership at bringyourownlaptop.com, okay, gives you access to my Essentials Illustrator course and the Advanced one, plus a bunch of other ones. So check that out. Um, there will be, you know, if you want to mock it up, Photoshop might be a go for that. And 
check out the Photoshop Essentials course if you don't have much experience there. Um, how to submit your work, do it on the website. If you go to bringyourownlaptop.com now, you'll see challenges along the top. Okay, if you're a subscriber, it's kind of pretty self-explanatory. You can upload images, videos, and yes. Also, submit your work via social media. Okay, I'd love to see it out in the Facebook group. Okay, I'd love to see it in the LinkedIn, LinkedIn group, on our Twitter feed, tag me on Instagram as well. There'll be links to all of that in the description. Um, anything else? Uh, make sure when you are submitting your work just to check out other people's work and provide feedback. Not so much, you know, it's, it's really important, especially when you're new to logo design, to be able to articulate why you don't like something or why you do like something, okay? We wanna try and keep it positive, okay? But if there's things that you think people can work on and build on, make sure you do. Even if you're not like the best creative director in the world, submitting, you know, commenting on other things, both to A, give them a positive jolt, imagine getting feedback on your work, and also be able to practice your articulation of, you know, critiquing work. Okay, what you do, what you think can move it forward. So make sure you check out other people's work as well. Um, deadline, 9th of February. Then there'll be the after part. So the deadline, 9th of February, skipped over that. Um, 9th of February is when the deadline finishes, okay? If you're watching this in the distant, distant future, they'll always be there as a challenge to do. So if you are looking for work and you're like, man, I missed the challenge, okay? Don't worry, you can do it. It'll be open to be done, okay? You're just gonna miss this uh, the after party. Okay, where we will talk about it afterwards and I will go through and kind of review a few, but it's always a great chance to use it as a dummy brief to build out that all important portfolio. Um, remember to comment other people's work, look to re oh, the other thing is if you do get comments on your work and you're like, actually, that's a good point. Don't, don't be afraid to resubmit it. Keep your old one though. I hate it when people delete it and then post a new version and you're like, can't remember what we said the first time. So make sure you keep it and just keep adding images and say, hey, this is the feedback that I got. This is the new version. And yeah, it's amazingly valuable to get that feedback and then to build on it. We'd love to see that. Um, last thing before we do Q&A, make sure questions in the live chat right now, um, Taylor, and we'll grab them now and stick them in the list and we'll talk about that in a second. But the last thing to remember, it's not, it's it, it, we're very, intentionally calling it a challenge, okay? It's a personal challenge, not a competition. There's no winning, okay? There's a way of appreciating other people's work, okay? But this is not a beauty contest. If you're new to this, those are the people that we want. If you're good, join in. If you are just getting started, this is a great safe place to join in, okay? Uh, and let's do a little bit of questions and answers. I'm looking forward to this challenge, okay? It's an exciting one. Rebranding your local takeaway. Awesome. All right, let's have a look at the question. So Deepak asked, uh, what job slash education did you turn down to become a designer? I didn't, I ended up kind of like not knowing where I was going and ended up in design and loving it. So there was no like, I didn't have a, like a, a fork in the road to go, oh, you know what? I'm giving up being a doctor to be a designer. I don't care what my parents say. That didn't happen. I went off to art school because I didn't know what else to do and I discovered design and I loved it. One thing that I might answer though is, I really love working with my hands being creative as well. So I know if I had probably seen something like industrial design or kind of mechanical engineering, probably more industrial design, like the design side of uh, yeah that world, I, I might've gone down that one. I really love it. I ended up teaching at uh, a, a really a, a school that had a lot of industrial design. I was the graphic design lecturer, but I loved what they were doing. Like it was a passionate class because I really wanted to do what they were doing. They were solving design problems still, like we do with uh, you know, like we do with fonts and images and videos and sounds and you know. But they were doing it with mechanical things, and I love that. So I do that as my hobby. You might have seen in some of my last videos where you're walking through my garage and it's full of workshoppy tools that I half know how to use. It's because I love that part of it as well. So that might have been a, a, a trajectory for me, um, but it wasn't ever presented. So that's something that I didn't give up, but probably would have followed quite strongly. Uh, let's look at another one. Jen, uh, when can we have bring your own BYOL merch, please? So 
it won't be this quarter, but I think we probably, uh, the team need to look at it for the beginning of the next quarter. So probably April at the earliest. Let's, yeah, I want it. Jen wants it. She's asked for her loads. Maybe we do a limited run and not turn in, like I, I'm waiting for it to be this official shop thing. I think on bringing our laptop, we just need to turn it in, just do a one-off for the subscribers uh, so that we can just do a little kind of thing without it being too, too much. That's a great idea, Jen. Uh, Unpuzzle, uh, hey Dan, love your courses. What is your opinion on freelancing websites like Upwork? And what are some tips if you want to become a video, a better video editor? Upwork is one of those, if you don't know what Upwork is, it's just a place where you can get work as a creative, okay? People post briefs and you submit uh, kind of a tender for it and say, yes, I'll do it. And you post your hourly rate or a project cost. There is a bit of a, it depends on where you are in your life. I would never do Upwork now, no way. Okay, I'm doing this thing, there's too much value in other things that I'm doing. But there was a, a huge part of my career where that was really helpful. I was doing Fiverr, there, I don't think there was an Upwork back then. But I remember when I lost my job, uh, the company closed, <laughs> they ran out of money. And you know, it was like, hey Dan, you don't have a job tomorrow. I'm like, what, what? <laughs> and they gave me a week's pay and sent it my way. That was no big drama, I could find another job. But the next job that I was gonna start, another freelance job was about, I don't know, eight, uh, six weeks away, it was a long time. It was worth waiting for. So in the interim, I did a lot of Fiverr work and it was great. It was, you know, it was, it wasn't great, but it, it helped me build stuff. I got to build out my portfolio more. I got paid for some of it. Okay, I did a bit of 99 designs as well. It was really good. I, I felt like it was like a lifeline. I was like, great, it's great Get, getting in, getting um, amongst it and doing stuff and getting paid while I'm waiting for this other job. But it's it's probably, I don't think I know anybody that's doing it as a career, but it's definitely a place to get started, learn the ropes, learn how to work with clients, get paid. Uh, the thing is with working with Upwork, you need to be very, you can't just go to like, hey, I'm, hey I don't mind if I do Upwork. You've got to really, okay, I'm gonna do Upwork, I'm gonna to apply to like 10, you know, 10 jobs each week or 20 jobs each week with a great tailored portfolio. You need to like do it properly if you want to do it and get paid okay. If you hope to just slap your portfolio up there and then complain that nobody's hired you, that's that's how that's going to end. But uh, Upwork, you need to be quite strategic. Look at other people doing well. What have they got as examples? What can you build on your own as good examples to get those first few clients so that you can, it's this kind of snowball. But long term, it's not a, a sustainable thing. In my opinion, I live in a, a first world country where, uh, you know, it, it just does, it can't pay my bills, even if I was doing it full time. Okay, not with my kids anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's my opinion. Uh, John Carney, do we get bonus points for sneaking Bernie Sanders into our mock-ups? <laughs> no, everybody is doing Bernie Sanders at the moment. Uh, John Carney, I saw a Facebook post where somebody admitted a version on your um, on your Facebook account. Somebody admitted a version. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that was so good. Um, yes. Yes, but they have to be secret, okay? I don't want them to be Bernie Sanders poking behind your logo. I want to see skill. You only get points if it's Bernie Sanders hidden amazingly. Uh, Erica, I would love to know how many pairs of glasses Dan has. Every class I take is a new color. Uh, yeah, 13, I think. 13, and I have two other ones. I got two other ones over there that are battery operated. They kind of connect to your brain through your skull and read you stuff kind of like a like smart glasses without the big um, awkward camera. So 15, yeah. Uh, Ryan, are all the other challenges somewhere? Yes, they've all been moved over to Bring Your Own Laptop. Okay, so all that stuff is still there. Okay, but it's a part of Bring Your Own Laptop. There's always the original plan. We, we kind of released it to the wild because of the beginning of COVID, but all that stuff isn't lost. It's still over on Bring Your Own Laptop. Um, Vic. Do you think the worst and best parts of being a designer is? Wow, it's a big one. I'll just take one little bit. It's the freedom and the freedom. So Vic, you know, you're a freelancer. It's both the most, you've got loads of freedom and you've also, everything's relied on you and you can't just turn up to you know, work on Monday hungover and just get paid. You need to turn up 
and produce and hustle and find. And so it's, I love that freedom. It's like being, an, like being a designer is very much the entrepreneurial life, okay? And I also love that we get to make stuff that, I like, I do stuff now and I've done thousands of things. And I, like I was uh, recording today the next episode of Bring Your In, the Bring Your Laptop show uh, for, we're doing fonts for the next one. And like, I'm recording myself and doing stuff. I played it back this afternoon. I was smug. Like, I'm like, man, I can't believe I make stuff like that. Like, it's not great. I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, I'm not sure what I'm trying to do, but you know, it's that like, man, look what I made. I'm sure builders get it. I know when I build my fence, I stand back and I'm like, you know what, made that. That's what I love being about a designer. It's, there was nothing before. There was a photo, uh, you know, it was Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Premiere. And then there was stuff and I made it and it made me laugh and it was fun and yeah, when it's going well, <laughs> it can go badly when there's no work on the table. So it's that, it's the exact same thing, but from different angles. Uh, Fatima, any advice for me as a self-taught getting started as a designer? I guess uh, where you want to go in the short term, like uh, you know, this time next year, figure out what you want to be doing. Do you want to be, you know, uh, if you're just getting started, is it to get a full-time job or is it to have a client or a couple of clients? Figure that out first and then set yourself milestones is probably the easiest thing. It's true for anything that I do. Okay, we're like, okay, here's what I want to be. This is the dream. It might be five years, 10 years, okay? Try one year. This is what I want to be this time next year and set up some milestones, okay? And what I do is I print them off and stick them up on a vision board, okay? Google vision board if you don't know. It's just, I print them off, stick them up, and every morning it's above my bed and I look at it and I'm like, what's one little step that I can use to move that forward? And it's amazing seeing those things every day, okay? And tear them off if they're not useful anymore and kind of replace them. That's, that's my step. Uh, middle of Nowhere Radio, I'm a subscriber to your tutorials. I'm very happy to say it was gr uh, it's greatly helping my business. I have a computer science and art background with degrees in both. And I was wondering if you prefer non-Apple hardware more than others. I regularly prefer uh, Lenovo or the Microsoft Surface Series for drawing tablets and desktop centers. Um, I use Mac and I would probably not go away from it. Um, uh, it doesn't matter if you get a really good PC. It's probably going to cost you less than a, the the equivalent Mac. So price, PC wins. And in terms of the probably what I would do if I'm if I was going to PC now, my biggest problem would be color of screen, like the type of screen. Like PCs have this like blue tinge, so I'd be looking to find an external monitor and just making sure that I was getting a good kind of color reference from my screen and then no it doesn't matter like I want to maybe do a YouTube show where I switch to PC and go full noise sell my Mac and buy a PC and just go because I get asked this so many times because I used to use PC and I loved it it was cheaper and I was like ha 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 Mac people paying twice as much the one thing though is you buy a Mac right now mid-spec Mac and a mid-spec PC mid-spec Mac is going to last probably three to four years before it needs replacing. You can stretch it out longer, don't, don't get me wrong, but it probably needs replacing right there. The PC is probably more of a two or three year replacement, okay, before, but the thing is, the, save, the money you save on it, you can probably buy two PCs and keep going at the top of the line, so that's my opinion on that. Stony, uh, when are you doing uh, Bring Your Own Beer? I so wanna do this. Hopefully when Adobe Max comes back, it depends where you live. You know what I was thinking just before uh, COVID hit? I was sitting with my wife and we we're talking about, you know, we should do a roadshow. I don't know how it would work, but some sort of roadshow, hit the big centers that, you know, uh, that I can see on bringyourlandtalk.com where everybody lives, okay? Google sneakily tells me, you know, lots of people in Mumbai, lots of people in Austin, there's a lot of people in London. So I can find those places. I'm like, maybe you should go to all these places and try and organize, I'll present maybe, you know, come present, maybe after Adobe Max present all the new features and something, and then do just drink beers with you all. But that was definitely on the plan. We, we got, there was a lot of talk of that. So we'll have to see. It's probably a couple of years away now, but um, I'll let you know wherever I go traveling for work. And you let me know if you're in those towns and we can have beers. Uh, Ahmed, uh, on previewing a logo in a portfolio. 
shall I make a complete branding even though it's only imaginary branding? Yes. So um, your portfolio, if you're looking to get more logo work, people don't like seeing a logo in isolation these days is it's there's so much of it out there. What people want to see is you understanding the brand and how it get applied. So I would be um, explaining what the problem was, who the client was, not too much, but explain those, show your resolution, like the best, the, the logo mocked up lovely, and then show the other things that you've completed to kind of fulfill the full branding project. Um, Cause it doesn't take too long. Cause the hard part of rebranding something is understanding the client, what they're about, like, um, you know, what you need to deliver, their voice, the language. Once you've got that, the other stuff is actually quite easy. The logo design is tough, I, I know, but like applying it and kind of, you know, finding a voice for the website and then the app and those sorts of things often will flow pretty flowy <laughs> from um, after you've done that brand. So yes, I would do it. I wouldn't just supply a logo. And um, yeah, that's my advice. Uh, Ramakis, Ramakis, uh, how can I prove my skills as a designer? I think we kind of talked about that earlier on. Set some targets, set some milestones, whatever it is. It might be, I want to do VFX or, hey, I'm not very good at time management. Set that as a goal, figure out some milestones, like, okay, I need to do this this week, this this week, try to build up to that. That would be my, um, James, I am new to Adobe, but fairly creative and computer literate. I have no previous work. Uh, behind me, so what is the best first steps? Is getting Adobe certified helpful? So getting Adobe certified is not helpful. Um, it is, I guess, it's a like a value add to a CV, but no, what people wanna see is your actual work. So you're stuck in the chicken and egg. You want a certification potentially so that you can prove to people that you can get work. And that's just not how design works. Design works, nobody cares about your, you know, your degree, your diploma, your certificates, okay? People wanna see your work and the problems you have solved, okay? So the best way is to get involved with this challenge, okay? Take it on as a proper brief and build it out. You'll have to explain it in your portfolio, okay? Cause you're studying, if you're studying at the, at the bottom, you need to explain that this was a self-directed project, this was the, you know, this was what I was tasked to do and these are my solutions. And when you are on, you know, looking for a job, getting work on Upwork, pitching to clients, it, it's it's about that completion, that solution, you know? Like when I'm hiring uh, designers, I don't care where, how they got their skills, okay? How long it took to get their skills. They could be 70 and have just started. And if they've got really good solutions to, you know, to the problem set in front of them, that's all that I'm worried about, okay? And you'll find that that's true of everybody. Victoria Burrowdale, she does our UX um, at Bring a Laptop. She did some really interesting work about certificates for us, and that's, that's some of the some of the important parts that came out of it is that certificates are useful for kind of like uh, for yourself, okay, and kind of proving to yourself and giving you the confidence to work. But what employers want to do is see your problem solving. They want to see those certificates put to work. So that would be my. I wouldn't worry about getting Adobe certified. At you know, I've done it. I have to do it because I'm a Adobe certified instructor, and it's kind of one of my like uh, calls to action. No. Uh, key selling points, I don't know what it is. But like, I'd like to be able to say, hi, I'm Dan and I'm a Adobe certified expert or uh, instructor. But it serves me as an instructor, it won't serve you as a designer the way you think. Okay, um, Mr. Ambitious, uh, is New Zealand a nice cheap country? No. <laughs> uh, it, you can do it cheaply, but no, it's not like, no. Uh, there's no public transport to speak of. Okay, unless you want to stay in Auckland, the main city, the whole time. So, but people have figured out ways. You can go, you can buy a car, you don't need insurance. <laughs> you can do it cheaply and just sleep in your car and do something called freedom camping, okay, and cruise around. But no, it's comparable. It's it's reasonably expensive country to be a tourist in. Um, yeah, you either need to be like young and happily sleeping in the back seat of your car or you need to be older and have a lot of money. That's my tip for going to New Zealand. Not a lot of money, just it's not cheap. Uh, Brian Murray, uh, are there other sites that you like, uh, that are like Upwork that you would suggest? Fiverr, 
okay, with two R's, Upwork, 99designs, uh, freelancer.com are the ones I know of. The one that I use regularly is Fiverr and Upwork. The other ones I've stopped using, not for any reason, just I get what I need from both of them. Fiverr, the, Fiverr, Fiverr for me as a buyer is for quick, cheap, good, enough, okay? Upwork is where I want a relationship. That's where um, you know I'll go out to find a designer that I want to, you know, or an editor or somebody that I want a relationship with for a longer time. Fiverr is when I want a quick job and done, and I want it done well. I can check the reviews. They've done it before. It's never five dollars, but it's going to cost me twenty. And I always give them a massive tip because it is always very cheap. Um, but Upwork is something where I go to where I want somebody for a longer term. So if you're looking for work. Upwork is likely where you'll get repeat work from somebody who's you know, looking for more than just a quick thing. Uh, Jessica, I wanted to say you're my favorite instructor. Thank you. I've had while learning all the Adobe programs. Thank you, Jessica. Appreciate that. Mark, are you planning to do any more courses on HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap? Yes, they all need to be updated with <laughs> Bootstrap 5. Huh. Yes, that's on the, that's on the plan. Trying to work out which course to do next. I've got one more show to design uh, for YouTube. Okay, I'm doing a three series: how to design the logo, like the mark, how to pick a font, how to pick colors, and then I'll get back to the another course. Okay, and I haven't decided exactly what that is yet. Um, but the HTML, CSS, Bootstrap one is screaming at me. Uh, how much time should a beginner learn to be a good artist? Uh, how much time? I guess it depends on what you want to do. I really want to be a good drawer, like like in terms of like portraiture drawing, like drawing the human figure. And um, but me wanting it and actually doing it, I I don't I obviously don't want it enough, okay? Because everything comes before. I want to learn to weld, and I've done that because I really want to learn how to weld, okay? And I've got reasonably good at it. I'm like I'm still a novice, but I spent time, got the gear. Put effort, like my passion was into it, learning it, whereas I still haven't learned to draw. So you've got to have that passion and acknowledge it and don't be afraid if you don't. And you're like, man, I want to be better as an artist, but I, I just, you know, if you're not carving out time for it, it's probably not going to happen and be okay with that. Till the time, you know, you know, this time next year, I might be, you know, head down learning portraiture. So get clear on it. And if that is what you want to do, okay, then Set yourself some targets, um, set yourself some goals, set yourself some milestones of where you want to be and how you might get there and just make them teeny tiny little steps. Okay, just, hey, I want to, you know, my portrait drawing, it might be just, I want to finish 10 videos of this course that I've bought. <laughs> I still haven't finished. Okay, that might be first milestone. Set it off so it's not too hard. Becoming a bigger, better artist is too broad. You'll never get there. So say that, okay, these are the things that I'm good at. These are the things I'm bad at. List them out. And then have just one action, just one action, you know, that's gonna get you a little bit closer. It doesn't have to be much. It might be just researching it a bit further. And then the next action might be actually, you know, doing this particular course or drawing that live stream or finding four people to follow on Instagram or somebody, okay, and keeping up to date with them or listening to podcasts about being good artists. Uh, David, hi Dan, I have done some of your courses, including Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign but I still feel I'm not really applying the knowledge to generate income. Any advice? That is a tough one. I guess for me, I'd be interested to know what you're, you know, you're not generating income. What are you trying and what's not working? Can that be fixed or is it you're just trying in the wrong right place, wrong place, okay? And some, you know, that, that, that would be my question is figuring out are you, you know, are you trying, you know, is it you're not trying hard enough in the right place? Or you're coming to that place with the wrong skills? Or is that the wrong place? You tried somewhere else. Like if you are going to Upwork and not getting work, maybe it's going local first. Finding people that live near you, community groups doing, you know, uh, pro bono work for uh, local businesses, charities, friends, family to kind of get from, you know, you want to get here, you can't see where my hands are, but <laughs> you want to get here, but you're starting back, you know, you're starting back here, so you might have to have a couple of steps to get there, 
Okay, get those first little jobs that may pay very little or so that you can get over here where you are earning. That's what I'd say. Okay, two more questions. Um, uh, do you know a company that, is, that are hiring online and is it possible to work online with them or can you find these companies if there are any? It's pretty tough. My, my advice would be always look out for job applications. Have a, have a really good portfolio ready to apply. And if you are applying, do something a little bit different. There's so many people applying. So great portfolio is a must, okay? Um, and have it reviewed, okay? Uh, Stephen's doing that on bringerandlaptop.com at the moment. Um, check out the announcements. If you've got a portfolio that you want to have somebody have a look at, so sign, up as, uh, sign up to bringerandlaptop.com and uh, check out Stephen there in the announcements. Um, he's doing portfolio reviews. So get that ready first. And... Um, then do something a little bit different. It might be that you make, uh, like I heard today, and it's why I do it a lot, I use video to communicate, and that's just something nobody's doing at the moment. It might be that, hey, let's say the company's called, I don't know, Scott, because I use that a lot, okay? Scott Design Agency. I would send in my CV and a link to a Loom or YouTube video of you explaining who you are, why you think you'd be good for that particular job, not a generic one, and your passions, what you like, kind of going through your CV. Okay, do something a little bit different to stand out and realize it's a bit tough doing it all online at the moment, people wanna see stuff, go to an agency, okay? Go to an agency that puts people in places and take whatever work you can get from them. It might be short, might be not that well paid. And I did it for a long time. I went to a new country, went to London, went to England, signed up as a, with an agency took whatever work I could get because I was pretty broke um, and um, you know, proved to the, not the client, also the client, but I proved to the agency that I turned up every time, the client liked my work um, you know, and that I was responsive to everything. And that agency, the, the girl that was you know, my account manager, she was confident in placing me in better and better more, you know, and I got a really good job in the end because she knew that I could deliver and that I was, reliable and I was good enough, she, you know, she didn't, often you'll have to do a test with them, but see if there's an agency in your area, um, you know, that is putting people in places and see if you can work them as well. All right, last one. Uh, what do I submit on the 9th of February? So that is your logo and your workings. So submit your redesign of your local takeaway, okay, and uh, yeah, redesign the local takeaway and any workings that you've done, okay, it might be mood boards, it might be concepts, it might be competitive analysis, okay, and to support that logo. And um, you can do then, if you want to, if you've got the time, do other things like a menu, takeaway box, uh, uh, delivery vehicles, might be a bike or a van, okay, and if you also, in the video, you've done a bit of the video courses, it'd be a great excuse to do a little promo ad for them as well. All right. That's it, my friends. How long have we been doing that? Feels like a long one. Where are we at? Doesn't tell me how long. Oh yeah, 38 minutes, not that long. All right, so go off, do the challenge, okay? Uh, submit your work. I will be checking them every day and delivering feedback. Uh, I'll stop pointing and I will see you for the after party in on the 9th of February is when it closes and then two days later, we'll do the after party and I'll be re reviewing all the interesting submissions and I will see you then. That is it. Is that it? I feel like somebody's willing me to say something else. Anything else? No. <laughs> that is it. All right, everyone. I will see you in two weeks. Make sure you tag me on Instagram. I am uh, Bring Your Own Laptop on Instagram. I am Dan Loves Adobe on Twitter. I am the Facebook group will be in the description. All the, all the links will be in the description. Okay, and I will see you next week. Bye.